Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome in to another duly noted podcast. As always, presented by the great folks over at Titan MRI. We're coming to you from the Meldon Law Gator Studios here at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. We got a fun show for you today. Uh, my my good friend Chip Towers is going to join us. Of course, uh, covers Georgia as probably better than anybody does for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, we'll talk to him about a lot of things with, that have to do with uh, Georgia and where they're going and what their confidence level is and SEC championship games and all that stuff. So we'll talk to him about that. Um, Coach Spurrier will not be here Monday because he's got to be at the uh, College Football Foundation. A banquet, and then he won't be here the following Monday either because he's got to be at the Heisman banquet. See, he's a, he's a popular guy, but he, I think right now he is going to be here uh, Friday, a week from today. Uh, still not 100% that he'll be able to do that either. He may actually go up to the Heisman thing early. So, uh, uh, yeah, hey, look, this is that time of year for him. He's It's banquet season, but we'll have plenty of great guests for you. Uh, in fact, Dennis Dodd is going to join us on Monday. Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports. Uh, Always love talking college football with him. Certainly a lot to talk about there. By the way, you know, I get we get this thing in the mail from Amazon, I guess it was, the other day. And my wife had bought me these long notebooks. Now, the problem is you can see all the writing I have on them. Um, I actually, with the regular size legal pads, it was not enough room and I was trying to squeeze stuff in. Now I got plenty of room and I got nine notebooks. So we'll get through a lot of shows. Uh, and we'll have number 201 on Monday because today is the 200th show. What about that? 200. Who thought it would last this long? Not me. <laughs> about 20 shows in, I was like, there's no way I'm going to keep doing Then I found my my stride. We found great advertisers, great people, great sponsors, great listeners, people who have um, – Really done unbelievable stuff. Uh, we've got we've developed relationships with a lot of people, and it's been great. I, I know we've had a our, our little bit of trouble. We've got that solved, and uh, we're going to try to keep going forward with great shows. Only only going to get better. On a bunch of great guests coming up, as you know. Um, all right, and we're going to figure out our Christmas schedule later. But right now, we do know we're doing shows Monday, Friday, and Monday, Friday next week. Okay, that's what we know right now. All right, it is time to talk about what we always do at this time, our Hand Law starting lineup. But, of course, the starting lineup is presented by Hand Law, a a Florida law firm which helps clients with government. You can learn more about Hand Law by visiting its website at www.hand.law. The firm is available for consultation in Jacksonville. We appreciate Chris, and um, obviously we're going to – be shifting some gears coming up, but I, I like I said, I think December is going to be unbelievable around here in terms of news, and it keeps breaking. And by the time you're listening to this, there's probably been four more stories that have broken, but I, I can only give you what I've been told by now. But let's start off with number one, and that is, it's pretty clear to me that that Billy Napier knows what the problems are, okay? We're not telling him anything he doesn't know. The defense isn't very good. The it has to get better. He may move some coaches around. He may do some. Other, there may be some coaches that don't survive. Look, there's a purge that's going to go on over there at Florida, and its players and its coaches, um, possibly. So we'll see how all that works out. But he knows it, and and the fact is, they're going to have a totally different roster, and because you're going to have a bunch of kids that sign, they're going to sign as many as they they possibly can that they think are worth coming here and they're going to get as many as they can from the portal as we know um they're, they're you know they're not going to be a lot of guys um coming back even though there are a lot of guys who could come back but a lot of them won't so anyway the point is going to be a whole new roster it may not work out that in year two it may not be a great year in year two i talked already about the schedule doesn't get any bit any easier at all um, but they, you know, when you're trying to blend all those guys like that, it can be hard and, you know, it doesn't always work that, that way. So we'll see what happens there. So don't, you know, this is a long-term project and they've got to figure out 
exactly how to get things going. But I, I do believe that he does get it. And the other thing I did want to say about is I look kind of look back on this season, and that is I'm really glad this season's over. You know, I've said before that last year's team was the I, I couldn't watch. I, I despise that team. They just they they made me very unhappy. Most unhappy maybe in the history of Florida football. Uh, this team I, I liked. I liked okay, but I, I don't want to watch them play anymore. I really don't want to watch their bowl game, to be honest with you. I don't know where it's going to be, but uh, it's kind of like, let's get this over with. Let's start building this new roster and see what he can he can get out of it. But that's just what I think. Uh, number two on uh, the hand loss starting lineup, um, obviously there's been some attrition, and some of it has not been good. Certainly the, the Kitna thing um, just – Blew everybody away, uh, especially the more you read about it. You know, just uh, I, again, I, I don't even want to say anything about it. There's nothing to say, uh, but it is uh, obviously he's gone from the team. He'll never play at Florida again. I don't know if he'll ever play college football again, to be honest with you. I don't know if he'll be able to get a job at anywhere. Um, it's certainly, uh, certainly a bad deal. But also Florida did lose several players. Uh, Dejon Reynolds got in the transfer portal, which was a little bit of a surprise. The one thing I took from it was, well, yeah, you kind of needed me because you were desperate in this one game. You threw me the ball a million times, and I made all these great catches. And then the next game, you had one of your receivers back, and you said, I weren't going to get the ball. And then he, then they did – they tried to force him the ball the second half of that FSU game, but I, I don't know. Maybe he's just not happy. Maybe they, Maybe there's friction there. I don't know what it is, but he's gone into the portal. Um, and then, of course, Shorter coming out, deciding to turn pro. Again, that's another loss, uh, he, even though he's been hurt a lot, a little bit lately, but certainly a really good player. Not an elite SEC player, but a good uh, college football player. And, of course, Anthony Richardson is going to leave. We know that. I don't think he'll play in the bowl game. I may, w- may be totally off, but I don't think he will. Um I don't see know why he would. You know, if you're going to leave, leave. Just get out. You know, and don't take a chance on getting hurt. Um, but that puts Florida in a real dilemma right now. They've got two quarterbacks on the roster, and that is Kyle Engel, who's a walk on, and Jack Miller, who we only assume exists because we've never seen him. We never seen him play. Um, so that's the thing. And and golly, it, it, it's going to be interesting. And they. In terms of the personnel, they can put on the field for a bowl game again. Still, I think it's going to be the Birmingham Bowl. Now it looks like it is, and that that's really not reward for those players because having been there, it's not good. Uh, number three on the hand loss starting lineup, the portal opens up Monday. A lot of people have already, in fact, Cade McNamara already declared he's going to Iowa. The Michigan quarterback. So um, I'm sure Iowa recruited him when he was coming out, but he lost his job and left and and transferred. Now I, I don't know why. How I guess he can't really transfer until Monday. I don't know what how that works. But anyway, Monday will be a big day. You'll see a lot of movement. You'll see Florida in on a lot of guys. Some other guys leaving. But here's a stat to remember with the transfer portal in 2020: 38 percent of the players got placed in a school. They ended up going somewhere, 38%. That means 62% didn't go anywhere. And that's not good. That's not good for the young people of America. Uh, last year was 41%, so it went up a little bit. In 2021, uh, just couldn't find a place to go. You know, they thought they're, they were better than they were. Um so, you know, the portals, the, the grass isn't always greener, but sometimes it is. It's it's kind of a risky move on both sides. Don't forget that part of it. It's not only a risk for the team to say, yeah, we got to find some guys and we we think this guy will fit our culture. It's a risk for the player who doesn't know if he can fit into that culture. Um, that's number three. Number four, we finally have the Rose Bowl right on, on their deadline agreeing to agree to whatever they agreed to. Uh, and there will be a college football playoff in 2014. Actually, games championship game be in 2015, but that then not this coming season, but the following season, I'm happy. 
I love it. I love that we are going to have it. Um, I More games, more games that matter. It's just more games that matter. People who talk about, well, the games aren't as big. Yeah, maybe the bigger games aren't as big, but there's more big games. So on a typical weekend, uh, the last weekend of the season, you might have two games that really matter. Maybe they aren't going to matter as much because those teams will get in the playoff anyway, but they still matter. It's still rivalry games. It's still... Um, playing for seeding and all that kind of stuff. But maybe they don't matter quite as much. But you know what? There's all these other games that really matter. Because 5 through 12, we have no idea who's going to get in. I I think it's going to be great. Um, I, I'm glad that they – I mean, we knew the Rose Bowl would cave. What's the Rose Bowl going to do? Oh, we're going to continue to take uh, whatever teams uh, that you – think we're worthy of, whether it's Northwestern this year. We'll take Northwestern, but we want the game on the January 1st, and we want it to be at 5 o'clock. And that's the only – I don't know why they are talking in that accent. I don't even know what accent that is. But they were harum harumphing a lot, I can tell you, in those meetings. But they, they acquiesced, as we all knew they would, and there was never much of a question. But good news, 2014, we're going to have playoffs. Um, I look forward to that. All right, number five on um, the um, hand-lost starting lineup. Sorry, I lost my train of thought because I was trying to read something. I wrote it too small, even though I had plenty of room. <laughs> All right, um, a lot of coaching moves, and you know the, the carousel continues. The Trent Dilfer to UAB, that was a bit of a stunner, and I didn't know he was that interested in it, but well, why not if you're UAB? Um, Tom Herman to FAU, and again, he's that's kind of the rehab stop where you go to get rehabbed and then you go on to a better job. Uh, that's what Lane Kiffin did. Now this is what Tom Herman is doing. Uh, interesting, Marcus Satterfield to Nebraska as offensive coordinator. He was about to get fired as offensive coordinator, everybody thought. Then he put 63 up on Tennessee. Then he beat Clemson, and then he leaves. So... But we're going to continue to monitor what what jobs are open. There aren't a whole lot, obviously. You know, with Hugh Freeze taking the Auburn job and um, Kiffin staying where he stayed, and uh, Rule to Nebraska. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, the exciting ones are. I don't know what is going on at Colorado. Dion said he got offered the job, but I guess he is not going to take it. I don't. I don't know. And who knows? There could be other jobs that open up. But it's always interesting to see. Where these jobs open up and where they, uh, how they, um, you know, tend to fill them because you never know. You never know what people are going to do, uh, whether they're going to go big, whether they're going to go name, whether they're going to go assistant coach, you know, stuff like that. Um, it is kind of weird. I think we've kind of gotten away from hiring a lot of assistant coaches. Um, it, it's better to hire a name coach, you know, that at least bring some excitement than somebody nobody's ever heard of who might be a better coach. Uh, I, I think, I think that's where we're kind of headed. Um, but we'll see. All right. That is our hand law starting lineup. And we of course appreciate hand law. We'll take a break. When we come back, my good friend, Chip Towers from the Atlanta journal constitution. We've got a lot of things to talk to him about, including a segment of yes, nowhere, maybe brought to you by big mills, cheesesteaks, and he'll come to you on the big mills, Zoom line as well. We got a lot of stuff to get to on the show still today. We'll be back with more on another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dooley, of course, from another duly noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it.
great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727 372 6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peds and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of mem other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150 and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? All right, welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios here at Steve Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. And it's a great pleasure to bring in my friend Chip Towers from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, who is, I don't know, you don't see too many losses lately uh, covering that Georgia football team, Chip. How are you? I'm I'm fine. I, yeah, it's it must be how you felt in the 1990s covering the Gators. You know, it's like... Uh, it really is. It's sort of this year has been surprising. Last year, you know, you kind of knew they were building for something. This year's been a little bit of a surprise. It was like, wow, okay, you know, they they did reload uh, per se. And um, I would definitely say the the Eastern Division is not quite what it was in the in the 1990s. I was talking to Mark Rick for another story uh, that I was doing. Uh, he he talked about. Uh, knocking the lid off that was his you know kind of battle cry when he came to georgia 
and it really has to do with with uh, John Maxwell, the speaker and leadership and and all this kind of stuff. But that was the phrase that they used. And uh, and and he was talking about he never did get across the finish line as George's coach. He said, but the East was a lot tougher then, too. And I think we would all agree with that. Yeah, but I will say this. The East actually beat the West this year. How about that? Eight to six. Uh, yeah. And after Georgia wins uh, on Saturday, tomorrow, they then it'll be nine to six. And that's that's impressive in itself. But a lot of it has to do with Georgia and Tennessee. And I was going to ask you about the surprise element of this whole thing, uh, you know, Chip, because – a, a lot of us, you know, we're filling out polls, whatever they're for. We're thinking, well, Georgia will slip some. You don't lose that many players. And we've seen teams that, you know, there were some LSU teams that did slip when they lost that many players in the NFL. Uh, but I, I don't think we realize what a factory um, Kirby Smart has put together there where they're just assembling one after another and putting them out there. And, you know, no, certainly no, uh, you know, no uh, – drop off at all except i mean they had some close games but they all you know you always have some close games they find a way to win those games yeah uh you know i mean you, you know metrically what it is uh, last year they gave up 10.2 points per game as a defense which is incredible in the modern era of football yeah and this year they're giving up 11.3 you know so it, it's like it's 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 you know five first round draft picks off the defense eight defenders overall 15 draft picks in total um, off of last year's team, and it's amounted to a point less per game. They're actually averaging more on offense. And, you know, as I was kind of handicapping things coming into the season, I thought, well, you know, they ought to be pretty good on offense. They had a lot of those guys coming back, Stetson Bennett being the chief among them. Uh, and it's like, yeah, they should be better on offense, but they may need to be because they lost all those defensive players. Um, what I didn't anticipate was them being as good on defense as they have been. So I, you know, I was probably like you and everybody else. I thought, yeah, they'll trip up and lose one uh, during the regular season, you know, go to the SEC championship game, probably lose to Alabama again this year and maybe miss on the playoffs, maybe get in. I, you know, that was kind of uh, my thinking on what they did. So obviously they're undefeated. They're ranked number one. Um, you know, technically they could lose to LSU on Saturday, uh, I guess as, as long as it's not some kind of blowout, and still be in the college football playoff. So that was beyond my expectations. And, uh, you know, I think we're, we're getting to a point now seven years in that you got to tip your cap a little bit. Kirby Smart, he and I butt heads a lot. I'm not the you know biggest fan from in terms of the job that I have to do yeah, versus access, the job. Yeah. He has to do, you know, but, you know, that said, I, I, you have to recognize, you know, um, ability when you see it and what he's been able to do with Georgia. Frankly, nobody else has been able to do a chance to win back to back national championships for the first time since Alabama did it in 12. Yeah. And I, I tell you one thing, I have learned an appreciation for Kirby, the speaker, the locker room speaker. Because we've got more access to that kind of thing that Georgia puts out, obviously, uh, and you hear what he's saying, and they, and it, like it makes sense, and it, and it, yeah. it, it, what he's saying not only makes sense, but it, you can see why it inspires eighteen to twenty-two year old young men, and it kind of inspires yeah. anybody about it. But I think the one thing he said after the game against Georgia Tech that I was told that uh, he told the guys, hey. If you have an SEC championship ring, raise your hand. And nobody yeah. could raise their hand. And that is going to be the motivation for this game where a lot of people are saying, well, the one the one reason I think LSU might be able to win this game is because uh, Georgia is getting the playoff no matter what. I, I think they'll be just as inspired as they would for anything. Yeah, he, he is a brilliant button pusher, uh, you know, I would call it. He knows how to push the buttons on his team. And that is, you know, that was the one – box left unchecked last year when Georgia goes 14-1 and wins the national championship, they did not hoist that SEC trophy. And as I've told people who've asked me about it this week, hey, that SEC trophy, it's big and it's heavy, you know, and it's a, you know, it's a big deal to be able to host it, hoist it. And, uh, and Georgia wasn't able to do that last year. So, and I, and I do think, you know, as 
old and tired as it gets about the next game is the biggest game and the next opponent, you know, I mean, that works in terms of uh, keeping your players uh, focused on the task at hand and not listening too much, you know, to the fan base. It's probably more difficult than ever with all the NIL factors and social media being what it is. But, uh, you know, Kirby does a good job of keeping their eye on the prize. And this week, it's LSU and the SEC championship. Yeah, and I mean, they've done a good job all year. I mean, certainly there was – I don't think there was any letdown when they went to Missouri. I think Missouri – they caught Missouri on a night, night that they were trying to make their season, and that does happen on the road sometimes. Um, yeah. But, you know, you know, same with Lexington, you know, where they just weren't quite as sharp as they needed to be to blow them out, but they never – you always knew they'd f- find a way to win the game. Yeah, and, you know, and it's kind of you, – you you experienced this with Spurrier in, in Florida in the 90s. You know, it's kind of like – I describe it someday. It's kind of like a flotilla now where Georgia shows up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's the biggest deal in town for everybody. I mean, just like it's going to be for LSU this week. People want to tear down goalposts. People want to beat the – you know, not the guy on top down. So that's kind of what Georgia's dealing with every week. And, you know, retrospectively, I think we realize – Missouri's pretty good defense. That's one thing they do, yeah. you know, really, really well. And and probably one of the most amazing stats about this Georgia team, period, is their negative two in turnover margin for the year. So that Missouri game was a perfect example. They were minus three that night, yet they still wow. won by two scores, you know, in the fourth quarter. And it's, uh, you know, same thing in the Georgia Tech game, same thing in the Kentucky game. They were negative in turnover margin, which if you talk to most, uh, you know, guys in Vegas and everybody else, they're like, that's the single greatest indicator to how well a team is doing, but not necessarily on Georgia. And that's because they're, they're able to erase mistakes with the defense. Yep. And, um, you know, they're more explosive on offense than they probably get credit for. You know, they've been stymied at the goal line a bunch of times, and that's kind of like the – the bugaboo that everybody points to them right now, they they kind of they kind of suck from two yards in. But you know, I I play it off as kind of like maybe Spurrier in the fun and gun. You know, they're a, lot, a lot of times they're better 30, 40 yards out when they get some open space, uh, and they're gonna you know they're gonna hit you with some darts in that type of situation as opposed to when you get real down tight and you're just trying. And Kirby, you know, also he. This is what I still think this is a flaw, a fundamental flaw for Kirby is the man ball factor. Is he gets down there in the goal line and he's telling Todd Munkin, just run it. You know, run, we want to we want to impose our will on the opponent. And when you're running into hosses like LSU's gonna have on their defensive line, sometimes physics just get involved. You know, they have, you know, six people uh where you have four people. Uh, in that one spot, you know, all can, uh, at one time. But, you know, that said, yeah, that's where we're at with Georgia right now. It's kind of splitting hairs on what they do yeah. well and what they do not so well. Well, it's interesting that, uh, and I, I agree with you, and I, I made a big deal about turnover margin before the season. Florida ends up plus 10 in turnover margin and 6-6. Six and six. Georgia's minus 2 and 12-0. and 0. <laughs> So you never yeah. know. How that's all going to work out, but I mean the 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 one pathway to an LSU win, which it's very hard to find it, is a lot of a lot of bushes and weeds and everything to get through that path. Would be a bunch of turnovers by uh, by Georgia, which you know are potentially there because they they have had some trouble with turnovers during the season. Yeah, they're kind of weird. They're, they're, there's turnovers themselves, and they haven't had tons of takeaways on defense either, you know, so the, the sum total is, is, you know, minus two for the year, but Kirby actually introduced me, introduced us to a a statistic I wasn't really familiar with before now. And he was talking about turnover margin. He says, yeah, you know, that does matter. But what they found, and apparently Georgia charts this religiously uh, in in their coach's room, and it is uh, explosive play differential. So, in other words, uh, yeah, and they count explosive plays. Georgia does specifically, and I think the NFL does as well. It's a 12-yard run or greater and a 15-yard pass or greater. If you end up with four more than your opponent in that total category, 
you're generally going to win. And um, and Georgia has been really good in in that regard. Uh, just they always have a, a, a few explosive explosive plays in every game. If you think of it. And, and Stetson Bennett, you know, uh, he kind of has, I guess, at this point, you know, his reputation is certainly as a game manager or whatever. But if you watch how he plays, you know, he's always trying for the for the big play. That's why sometimes his uh, uh, interceptions get a little bit maddening, but you know he's always trying to make the great play, and they really scheme well. Uh, Todd Munkin's great as an offensive coordinator in terms of scheming. Period. But then it comes back to the your personnel, right? So you got Stetson Bennett who has some run game in him. You have Kenny McIntosh and 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 Dejon Edwards who have a lot of uh, backfield skill beyond just running the football. Yeah, and then you have those tight ends, uh, you know, which are a mismatch for everybody. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't think a guy like Lad McConkey really gets enough credit. I mean, he's got three plays of 70 or more yards. You know, that's your little wily flanker slash slot back who's always looking for those little gaps and w- will slip up on you as soon as you take his, your eyes off of him for a minute. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Bennett, and I, I was going to ask you this question. I feel like like George is the best team in the country. Okay, that's I I felt that way all year, um, but I can't. I like I feel like I need to put somebody on my Heisman ballot, but I don't know who to put on there. And I it maybe it's a wasted vote because I don't think anybody can win from Georgia. So, I mean, tell me yeah. who I should put on there. Yeah, I mean, really, I, I I I don't blame anybody for not having anybody from Georgia and Stetson Bennett in particular. Now, I began the season saying, keep your eyes, you know, on this guy because you know, a six-year senior, he's at the controls, you know, early in the year. I mean, it, it seems like ancient history right now. But think of uh, two of their first three games were against Oregon and South Carolina, one in a neutral site, one on the road. They win those games 48 to 7 and 49 to 3. And as we learned as the year went on, yeah, Oregon's pretty good. And yeah. his numbers were through the roof in those games. Oddly enough, it hadn't been a ton of touchdowns. So that's why he's not going to win the Heisman. He just hadn't put up the numbers. His, his passing numbers are actually pretty good. You know, they're up in top three of the conference in terms of passing. He's passing the ball a lot. But they're not scoring a lot. So, uh, and for a while, he was on a pretty good streak. I, I, it might have been seven games in a row with a touchdown run, but he he hadn't he hadn't scored one here lately. So you're talking about what sixteen touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns. Right. That just doesn't compare to Caleb Williams and you know heck even Jaden Daniels, who you got going this weekend. So you know he doesn't produce the numbers to be considered in that conversation. But I think the beauty in Georgia is in their hole, right? I mean, because yeah. Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington, um, you know, both could win the Mackey Award. Uh, you know, they're both going to be probably first-round draft picks. Darnell Washington this year, Brock Bowers is still just a sophomore. So he, he'll have another year to go. And uh, kind of all those different bits and pieces is what makes them go, not one guy. It is amazing, and he's, they've done a great job. And I, I want to ask you about uh, the view up there of what's going on down here. Uh, obviously, six and six, everybody's kind of making fun of their loss to Vanderbilt. But they, they do know that Billy Napier is making inroads and in recruiting. I would think for Georgia fans and coaches, they would go, yeah, but we're still getting the five stars. He, you know, he's, he may have made a dent on a couple of four stars here and there, but, but not much of a factor. It, what it, what is the kind of the viewpoint of what's going on with Florida? Well, I kind of gauge that on you know Kirby Smart's um, sort of comments and and uh, his uh, attitude. I, I guess you'd put toward Florida. He likes Billy Napier. Obviously, they know each other. They work together at Alabama. Mm-hmm. You know, Billy Napier has the process. I mean, uh, so did McLean. But but y- you know, it's it's. Uh, he he knows what he's doing and he knows how to do it. And I think actually the fact that it it's taken a minute is probably positive for Florida. Like you're not you're not searching for too many quick fixes. Now it's 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 weird these days with the transfer portal. I mean, you look in this 
this game right here with Brian Kelly a, a, against Kirby Smart, LSU has a ton of transfers, starting with their quarterback. 16 from, or 17, from, yeah. From Arizona State. Yeah. I, I, I think it's similar to what, you know, we used to always see in basketball, right? Yeah, it's like uh, uh, you, you can go get some uh, quick transfers and get well pretty ki- quick, but it, how is that going to sustain your program? So I think, you know, Billy Napier is going to be trying to build it from the ground up, kind of like Georgia did. Georgia took some lumps in uh, mm-hmm. 2016, but, sure. you know, they strung together. I mean, now it's like, uh, I don't know, seven top five classes in a row. Uh, and the the really, I think too much gets made of that with Georgia, because if you look on on this team in particular, I mean, first off, you're you're talking about a walk on quarterback. But, I mean, there's a lot of uh, three stars and four stars. I think evaluation is the key, Huge. right? Does this yeah. guy fit into our system? Does he have the right attitude? Because, look, playing for Kirby and by association playing for Billy Napier, it's not for everybody. You know, it's hard. And you're going to be asked. You're going to be asked some old school stuff. Uh, you're going to be asked to sit for a while. You're not ready. So, wait, if you look at the number of these guys that didn't play very much – uh, in the past couple of years that are making major contributions this year, it's a bunch. That's a large number. So uh, I think patience is the key and trusting the process as much as I hate to, to, to you know, uh, repeat those phrases. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what you got going on with Billy Napier, and it's, it's not going to be a quick fix. They, George has almost become what FSU is, was in the 90s, where, you know, basically a junior – you know, redshirt junior quarterback would have to wait his time. And, of course, that was before the portal. But, um, uh, all right, Chip, uh, it is time for us to play our game, Yes, No Way, or Maybe, brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak, Big Mills Street Dining Done Right. We appreciate them over at Big Mills. And you got. Th- we're going to give you three questions. You can answer them, Yes, No Way, or Maybe. Feel free to elaborate on any one of them. Number one, four. My friend Chip Towers, Carson Beck is Georgia's quarterback next year. Yes, I think so. Uh, it, you know, you were talking about the patience and everything that it takes there. Carson Beck looked really good in the preseason to the point that there started to be, you know, some of those mumbles about uh, uh, about you know could could he unseat Stetson Bennett, and that was never going to be the case. The question for me about Carson Beck is what Georgia is doing. For Stetson, with Stetson Bennett right now is very specific to Stetson Bennett. Carson Beck, a little bit of a different type of quarterback. Now, he's way more mobile than he gets credit for, uh, and he's better, also a better thrower. So I, I think the combination they're in, that guy wouldn't have waited around this long without some promises, in my opinion, and, and I think it's going to be his job to lose next season. All right, number two on yes, no way, or maybe your good friend Mike White makes the NCAA basketball tournament this year. Ooh, <laughs> I don't want to say no way. Here's the crazy <laughs> thing uh, uh, about that. Do you know they? So they won their sixth game the other day. Yeah, that I did. Matched the total of last season. I know. So the bar is really low here. You know, I mean. Uh, everybody uh, loves him, you know. I mean, and, and Mike White, you know this. I mean, he's a likable guy, right? I mean, he really right. is. And so he's fit right in to the Athens community. But you know, I mean, he's in a giant shadow right now of the Georgia football program. Nobody's really paying any attention, and they have, you know, they've played a couple of decent opponents. There's not a whole lot, you know. I just don't have a strong feeling on it whatsoever, but. He has already done better in in a small sample size than Crean did last year. So I would I would astracize your question and say postseason maybe maybe. Yeah, it's funny how what seemed like a slam dunk hire with Tom Crean turned out to be so bad. I I, I it's kind of hard for me to explain. You're you're close to it, but I, I yeah I thought that was a great hire and it was just didn't work. I did too. Well, in particular, when when he got um, when he got Ant Man to sign on, yeah. I thought, oh, yeah, wow, you know. Now that hadn't happened. When you're talking about, you know, the number one AAU guy in the country out of downtown Atlanta, 
when he went in there, and I don't know what he had to do to get him to Georgia, <laughs> but, you know, he got him. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for him and for Georgia, that wasn't the program elevator he he no. expected it to be. You know, it just it, it didn't work out that way at all. Some of that, I, I think, had to do with uh, Anthony Edwards' own sort of uh, uh, conditions, I, I would say, for, for, for being there. And you knew he wasn't going to hang around, and he just wasn't really a lift the team kind of guy. But uh, yeah, I was I was surprised. I am happy to see Tom Crean is back where he belongs. He just there was an announcement today. ESPN has brought him back on as a, as an analyst for their college football. And he's he's actually pretty good. In in you yeah. know he's a talker. He likes to talk. The problem is just getting him to fit in those little tiny fifteen second segments that they need on TV. Yeah, I, he's usually probably is going to be pacing back and forth doing them. Um, yeah. All right, finally on Yes, No Way, or Maybe for our friend Chip Towers, with the news about the Rose Bowl uh, giving in and we're going to start having a playoff next year, you may be at your last SEC championship game ever. Yeah, I, I, uh, it was interesting. I don't know if you saw Greg Sankey yesterday, but he was just he was kind of asked about the future of the uh, conference championship game in light of all this. And 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 when you look at even with a fourteen playoff, it's basically a meaningless exercise for Georgia. Again, you know, I guess there's ways that that Georgia can blow it in in this scenario, but the, the conference championships just simply. Uh, you know, aren't going to remain as meaningful as they are now. There's going to be the automatic qualifiers, I guess, the AQs right. that come with them. But, uh, you Plus know. Plus you're adding an, uh, so many more games on for some teams. And that, that would be yeah, the, the one but that's thing. That's not, I mean, you can almost, you can almost play the system on that. You know, in that scenario, you know, Greg Sankey, wink, wink, and they'd never do this, but, you know, won't you go ahead and lose to LSU, you know, then they get the AQ and you're going to be in anyway, because there's 12 spots. And, you know, so it's, uh, but I, you know, I am generally for it. You know, I'm an include inclusionary guy by nature. And, you know, the more the merrier, I think there's going to be a lot of SEC teams in it when it's, when it's said and done. I liked the eight team uh, model better. I, I just thought it was a little bit more of an exclusive club. And when you look at, 12 and 13, you know, you, you wonder about how good those matchups are going to be, but I'm, I'm yeah. happy to see them expand it. Yep. Me too. Needs more football for me to watch. Uh, That's Chip, right. always great talking to you, buddy. And, uh, we'll someday see you again. I promise. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, you'll get me out of Gotta Get you out of Gainesville, man. We'll, we'll get out of here eventually. I it's appreciate you being here. You, you look great. And I love duly noted podcasts. It's one of the greatest Oh. shows in the country. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We do the best we can. Right. We have great producers. All right. Thanks, Chip. See ya. All right, Chip Towers from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution joining us on our Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. Uh, we appreciate him and, of course, playing Yes, Nowhere, Maybe. And, of course, my phone going off in the middle of it, which was always a highlight. Um, what we will do, though, is we'll take a break. I'll get back to whoever called me. Not really. It was just a robocall. But uh, we'll, we'll come back. We've got a lot of things to deal with, a lot of things to take care of. No, deal with is not the right way to put it. Uh, Leonardo's Quick Picks, we'll get the Adams Rib Co. Gator of the Week, the Quarterback Club Games of the Weekend, Hester and Kipke, three things, Dooley Story, Pat Dooley Story Time, this, that, and the other, all coming up here on another Dooley Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dooley, of course, from another Dooley Noted Podcast. This is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer, to to go. Uh, what would give me the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online order. So we, before it was a call-ahead carry-out, quick service. Uh, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought... Wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. 
great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Pat Dooley Storytime is brought to you by East Lake Pediatrics. Nobody knows how to provide pediatric health care for little gators better than Dr. Mike and the other board certified pediatricians and the pediatric nurse practitioners of East Lake Pediatrics. They have been providing personalized health care to the children of Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties since 2004. And with the recent addition of Dr. Chris, who is also board certified in sports medicine, they are now offering care for youth sports injuries as well. To learn more about East Lake Pediatrics, call 727 372 6760. And to get to know them better, listen to Dr. Mike and Dr. Carey on their Peas and Pop podcast on multiple platforms. Gator football is back, and the best way to get exclusive insight is a membership in the Gainesville Quarterback Club. As the oldest Gator Booster Club in the world, Gainesville Quarterback Club gives you the access to speakers like coaches, Gator greats, and more. Yeah, I even talk over there. It's pretty cool. Share your passion for Gator football with hundreds of mem other members at weekly in-person meetings or for non-locals via Zoom with an out-of-town membership. Right now, out-of-town memberships are only $150 and all new out-of-town signups get entered to win two Champions Club tickets to a homecoming. That's pretty cool. Against Missouri, speaker presentations, home game tailgates, and special events throughout the year. Join the quarter Gainesville Quarterback Club today. Email the club at membership at quarterbackclub.org or call me, Pat Dooley, 352-317-3444, and I'll get you in touch with the right people. Gainesville Quarterback Club. Is your bank dropping the ball, not playing with heart or skill? Then you need to check out the scouting report on Campus USA Credit Union. That's a five-star recruit if I've ever seen one. Campus has it all, like great rates and products, friendly service, and smart game plans for you and your money. So why not put some star power in your financial life? Visit CampusCU.com or any campus service center today. Honey, can I recruit you to take the garbage out? Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. And let's have some fun here on our 200th show. I still can't believe I've done this 200 times. So that means we've had, what, 100 and probably 160 guests because Spurrier doubles up, you know. And we have had some other people do it multiple times. But anyway, it's a lot of guests to, have to get for our show, and we hope you guys appreciate all of them. Again, Dennis Dodd joins us on Monday because Coach Spurrier is out of town, and then uh, Coach Spurrier hopefully will be here Friday, and we'll continue to go on with all of our great guests. It is time for us to do our Leonardo's and Millhopper quick picks. You know, everybody, a lot of people sent in for the last game, and I did not even grade them yet or write them down. I was busy today with something else, so I'm going to do that when I get home, and we'll start a new one. Uh, Alan Fowler, yeah who uh, won the last contest. I sent your book off today, signed, because he asked for it signed. 
uh, but I did not give get the I got the cheap rate, so you may not get it for about seven days. It's Christmas time, man, but it's coming. It's on. It's en route, as the French like to say. Uh, but our Leonardo's at Mill Harbor Quick Picks. We start a new one. Probably draw. We may draw something like right at Christmas. Uh, you know, yeah, it's four weeks. We'll do that. Uh, draw something at Christmas to win $25 at the great Leonardo's of Millhopper uh, and Kyle Cohen, the great people over there. We're just going to give you one game to qualify for, and it's a hard pick, though. I will say this. Georgia given 17 and a half against LSU. Now, Jaden Daniels, you know, his ankle, he had an ankle problem. They haven't really, they've been kind of hush-hush. I think he'll play, but who knows? You know, they'll shoot him up. Um, God, I remember uh, Chris Leak telling me the story about the the Arkansas uh, SEC championship game, and they they gave him a shot in his I think it was his shoulder or elbow uh, at halftime because he had hurt it, and they went to throw the first pass. Remember the first pass got picked off. I think it was I don't think it was run back for a touchdown, but almost for a touchdown. Maybe it was run back for a touchdown. Just the, the ball just floated right to a defensive lineman. Anyway, because he, his arm had gone numb, so you got to be careful with that. Um, but um, so I mean, you got to pick one or the other. But seventeen and a half is a lot of points to give up, and you never know where, at what point, George is going to take the foot off the gas and go, "Okay, we've clinched the number one spot. We've won an SEC championship. We win by twelve instead of uh, nineteen. We're good." So you know, it's t- tough pick. So get that in to me at patrickdooley54 at gmail.com. Get your winner in there, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have uh, a qualifier. So that's great. Well, we got a, I know we have some qualifiers from last from Monday or Thursday's game because I know people pick different ways, so i am just got to go look at them. Uh, our Adams Ripco to go, Gator of the Week, and this is going to be – it seemed kind of strange to you, but I decided to make it – Kwesi Reeves, who um, didn't play hardly at all out in Portland. And we were all going, what is going on? And they kept saying, coach's decision. And then Todd Golden came out Monday and said, it's on me, you know, uh, and and really just weird, right? It didn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I know there are people who know what's really going on there. And I'm wondering if he's done. And then he starts him in the next game, has a big heart to heart with him. And what does he do? Um, you know, because he had played eight minutes in three and a half games going in. He scored 17, or 19, I think it was, uh, 15 in the first half against FAMU. I know I know who they weren't playing against a great team, but uh, hopefully Reeves can be a factor because he is such a talented guy. I mean, you saw the reverse dunk in the few minutes he played out in Portland. Um, hopefully that they, they'll get on the same page. You know, there, there's some guys who you just have a hard time getting on the same page with. Um, Scotty Lewis and Mike White never got on the same page. They just weren't. And I don't. I, it's it's so funny to me when you recruit kids and then it doesn't work out because you can't. You don't think a lot. I mean, uh, you got to make sure that they are going to do what you want them to do. Maybe maybe it's not what they think is the right thing, and maybe it's not the right thing. But you've got to make sure they're doing what you want because you're you've got a master plan. And you need all the parts of it. But anyway, so I'm giving it to uh, to Reeves. Uh, and hopefully he. this is the beginning of something really special for him. He's our Adams Ribco to go. Gator of the week. It is time for our three things with Hesser and Kipke. Of course, three things is always brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a law firm based in Hale Plantation, specializing in workman's comp employment and family law. Visit their website at www.hklawfl.com or call Ken and Jennifer at 352-339-9920. I need to call Ken. Actually, I need to talk to him about the golf tournament. All right. That reminds me about that. All right. Number one, um, the one thing we haven't really talked about on the radio at all this week, and and really it's kind of been blown off, was the, the massive smelly egg that Florida laid against West Virginia in basketball. And I I, I just was, like, taken aback almost. Like, all right, it's going to be a tough game. You know, West Virginia always, you know, always plays teams tough. And this team didn't physically look like they wanted to play. Now, I dismiss it. Uh, you know, again, we're it's very early in the process with 
this new coach, and they were out there for a long time. And sometimes you, some teams get, you're playing for what, fifth place? Because you lost the first game, you're playing for a fifth place, so there's nothing on the line. It's just you got to you got to get yourself ready. That can happen, and I understand that. But man, that was bad. That was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, I actually turned it off. I couldn't watch it. Um, but we'll see how this plays out as we go forward. Whether they're able to, cause it's about to get really interesting with the UConn coming into Gainesville with. Uh, the game against Oklahoma, um, you know, and then you got conference play starts way earlier than normal this year, so it's it's about to get real, and uh, we'll see what they got. I mean, I, it feels like they've got some good players if they can start playing together, um, you know. We'll. I mean, I think they they could be a really good team, as, as good as this league is. But they've got to. They've, it's got to meld, and it's got to meld with your coach. It's got to meld with your assistant coaches. They've all got to be on the same page. Sometimes it takes a little while. It's just like we're de- what we're dealing with with football. The difference is in football. Um, basically, he walked in, took all the kids that they had, recruited a few others, and tried to put it together. It didn't work. Um, in basketball, he took kind of redid the roster. He kind of was a day or. A step ahead of where Billy Napier is going to be this year, trying to redo the roster with the portal and everything, and that's the way it is in college basketball. And it still may work. We'll just have to see. Uh, number two, I thought about this the other day. If I was a commissioner of the league, uh, when I say the league, I mean college football. That's the league to me. Uh, but if I was a commissioner, if they made, if they decided to name me commissioner, which would make sense because I have really good ideas and I'm really watch a lot of football and love the game there would be no more duplicate numbers i i fight i have been fighting this for years i I think it's the dumbest thing in the world well it's important for recruiting because this guy wants number two and we already have a number two well tell him he can't have number two so well he'll go somewhere else well do they have a number two (laughs) i mean if that's the only reason you're getting kids i don't care you know i I, I duplicate numbers drive me crazy. You see guys ripping off jerseys, putting other jerseys on, going back, getting penalties because they came, they went in. There were two number threes on the field. There's only you're only allowed to dress. I think it's eighty. What is it? Eighty five maybe for a college game. Sixty for an SEC. Sixty five for an SEC game. You don't need duplicate numbers. I don't, I'm tired of hearing about the recruiting part of it. I don't care about that. Keep the numbers singular. I get confused. A PA announcer gets confused everywhere. Every stadium I've been to, at one point, especially with the visiting team, he, a guy has said the name of a guy who intercepted a pass, and it was actually the quarterback who intercepted the pass. Um, that's what he. I mean, that's what he announces him at. It would be like pass intercepted by Rex Grossman. No, no, no. That was another. That was a defensive back that did. Anyway, that would be my first rule. I would put an end to that. And finally, number three on Hester and Kipke, three things. I did want to um, acknowledge the death of Christine McVie. Uh, I'm a big Fleetwood Mac guy. I I love that band. And it always felt like she was the one who didn't get enough credit. But she really was the soul of that band, 79 years old. Uh, I I saw something from Stevie Nicks. He said she didn't even know she was sick. So it's kind of like Norm MacDonald, David Bowie, one of these people that dies. You go, I didn't even know there was anything wrong with them. Well, they, they... they're private people, and uh, it made me uh, very sad. I watched a lot of uh, my wife was listening to some music last night of hers, and I watched some videos last night. Uh, really, really special uh, person, and uh, I'm a, I, I would say Fleetwood Max in my top twenty of all time. You know, somewhere somewhere in there. One day I'm going to do that top twenty. I swear. That is our Hester and Kipker, Kipke. <laughs> Three things. Let's get to our Gainesville Quarterback Club games of the weekend. And uh, you know what they are. You know what you've got a lot of. What you may or may not know is volleyball tonight is at 7. And then tomorrow night, if they win, assuming they win tonight, they're playing at 7 again. So if you can go out and support Mary Wise's team, she deserves it. Another SEC championship, the 25th, uh, now in the NCAAs again. They need all, you know, I mean, they're, they got a really good team. They should get through this weekend, and it'll be tough next weekend but they deserve your support uh that is tonight and tomorrow at seven um 
college football. I'm just going to give you the Power 5 games. USC Utah tonight is on Fox at 8 o'clock. Uh, Utah, three-point underdog in that game. I'm surprised it's not more. Uh, TCU, this is on Saturday, has Kansas State. That's a noon ABC game, TCU by two and a half. Uh, George LSU we gave the spread on that. It's a four on CBS. Clemson, N- North Carolina at eight on ABC, and then Michigan-Purdue at eight on Fox. So that's another example of you need two TVs. It's really important for those of you out there to get a second TV in your room that you go watch games. Got to have it all at all times. Um, by the way, Clemson is a seven and a half point favorite over North Carolina. Yeah, seven, seven and a half. And Michigan, 17 over Purdue, which I, I would take Michigan and give the points there. That is our Gainesville Quarterback Club games of the weekend. We appreciate the quarterback club, and we're going to continue to do games of the weekend for for the rest of this month because we just we used to appreciate what they've done and to be a sponsor every every football season. We're just going to keep it going uh, through uh, the end of the weekend, but it is available for purchase as a sponsor if you want to get aboard uh, and do the basketball games of the weekend going forward, or other games. You know, could be the Masters, and we'll again keep you updated on times and everything like that. All right, this, that, and the other. I uh, was seeing this, and of course, this, that, and the other, as always, sponsored by Ballyhoo Grill, uh, by Ironwood Golf Course, and by Dar Shackow Insurance. We appreciate all three of them. Uh, I was, I saw this thing on, on Facebook, where, or I guess it was on Twitter, where, because um, I was thinking about this one day, and so the, this part of it is that I was thinking about, man, when we went to the Grand Canyon, Karen kind of pushed me into going, and it was great. She didn't push me off the cliff, but she pushed me to going. We went. It was unbelievable. And all I could think of was, man, how far could you hit a golf ball? If you just hit it, a wedge, and just hit it off of it, that would be something. So the, that was, I'm reading this thing on Twitter about this woman, Katie Sigmund. Her, she's a 20-year-old woman, and they, there was pictures of her hitting three, she hit three balls, into the Grand Canyon. I'm like, wow, that would, that's pretty cool. I wonder how if she measured them. No, she didn't have time to measure them because she got arrested. She got in trouble because um, it is not allowed. You can't do that. You, uh, she got, I think she it was a fine and, you know, something like that. It wasn't like a big bad thing, uh, but you can't do it. You're not allowed to hit the balls in there. It turns out, though, she does a lot of things like this. She has 7 million followers. And the other is she has also bowled at a bowling alley with a pumpkin and, and put that on TikTok or Facebook or all these things. Anyway, weird. But that is this, that, and the other for today. Finally, Pat Dooley's story time is always brought to you by Eastlake Pediatrics. We appreciate Mike Jordan and Eastlake. Um, I told this story on the radio, and I've told this story before, but I haven't told it, I don't think, on here. And I I thought it was a good story because of the lack of tackling by the University of Florida football team. And we saw it in the last game, especially in the LSU game. They just weren't a good tackling team. And it reminded me of the time that Spurrier said during his press conference on Tuesday, you guys all come to – because practices started to be closed. This must have been 2000. They'd started to be closed. He goes, you guys come to practice today. I want you to watch us tackling. So, okay, like sheep, you know, we just – Bah, bah. We go wherever Coach Spurrier tells us to go, and we go out to practice that afternoon. And we're sitting there, and all of a sudden he goes, uh, at like halfway through practice, he goes, all right, Pat Dooley and the media boys, come on over here. And so here we go. Hey, <laughs> we're just we're going wherever we need to go, wherever you say, Coach. And so we just all walk over to the middle of the practice field, and they go, we're going to have tackling drills. So they tackle, and they tackle for about 20 minutes. He goes, all right, you guys are done, dismissed. So we all left. We didn't get anything out of it except a good story. And Florida did go out and play a lot better defense the rest of the year. In fact, I think, I may be right about this, I think they led the SEC in defense under John Hope that year. So anyway, that is my Pat Dooley story time for today. Thanks so much to Jason and to Tammy for doing such a great job with the editing and the producing and what else do you do? listening, burping. There was a great burp earlier, one of the great burps of all time. You could smell the whole thing. But anyway, 
Uh, that'll be it. Do it for today's podcast. We appreciate everybody, especially all of our great sponsors, including Titan MRI, who presents us every Monday and Friday. We'll be back Monday. Till then, I am Pat Dooley. I am deep. I am way back, and I am out of here.